I guess it's been, uh, I guess <clears throat> you can go to sleep soon. You just have to get through this, right? Uh, I said a couple of years ago here, starting the rock and roll festival, uh, 10 a.m. is like asking for milk at CBGB's at 3 a.m. Uh, this is um, quite a crowd. They get bigger and bigger every year. <coughs> And I'm, uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to once again be able to uh, open this because I think this is one of the coolest things uh, that uh, uh, for not only Estonia but rather in the region that we have something as wonderful as, uh, as Tallinn Music Week where you really do get to see what's new, interesting, what's happening in, uh, in music and more broadly in contemporary culture. Uh, for example, the uh, classical music rave tonight must be, I think, the first uh, ever anywhere. And I look forward to that if I can stay up that long because I'm old, you know. Uh, I just, <coughs> Oddly enough, I woke up this morning, I went to my computer and I got, uh, I got a, had a mail from someone um, who I last saw 35 years ago. I, 35 years ago, I was uh, teaching in a private school. I taught um, English and I taught science, uh, but then there were these kids who really were, didn't, weren't really interested in anything. You might as well call them stoners or something. But, uh, anyway, in order to get them enthused, I, on Friday afternoons, I taught a course called The History of Rock and Roll. It was pretty funny, given that in 1979, rock and roll was, well, basically, you know, what was it? 25 years old, and that was 35 years ago, but anyway, he wrote me a letter this morning, I hadn't heard from him in 35 years, and he said, oh, that, oh the course had changed his life. He didn't say for the better or for the worse, <laughs> but in any case, so, uh, so uh, seven years of Titan Music Week is a short history compared to the history of rock and roll. Uh, I said, I, I love it. For some reason here, I'm always quoting Ezra Pound, who should say, poets are the antennae of the race. And I think that is uh, translated now over to, uh, to the culture of music, which in so many ways has been uh, uh, the, uh, that part of contemporary culture that senses things earlier. I got into trouble here three years ago when I talked about Pussy Riot, which no one had heard about at the time. I was soon excommunicated from the Lutheran Church, but um, but in any case, uh, in general, music tends to be ahead of everything. Uh, I'm glad this year we're, uh, there's no area where music has been uh, behind things and it's catching up with uh, the boring, dull world of uh, politics, which is that uh, a country like ours, which became uh, it re-establishes independence uh, in 1991, uh, made its way back to Europe officially in 2004. Uh, we thought we'd eradicated all of the differences between Eastern and Western Europe, with joining the European Union and so on. But nonetheless, there's this thing which continues to be called the Central East European Talent Exchange Program, as opposed to the European Talent Exchange Program, as if there's something kind of special or second rate or second class about us Central and East Europeans, because, you know. But fortunately, that is now coming to an end, and I think that's one of the events that we have here that uh, is worth, uh, worth appreciating that uh, finally we too we are recognized as being real people when it comes to music, even though I do think that the uh, that uh, we might have to reinstitute this soon because actually much of the interesting stuff is coming from this part of the world. A little bit about how this is all arranged, uh, I would say that uh, this is largely a private sector effort that, uh, that uh, Helen has been pursuing here, which on the one hand makes it uh, much more difficult to do because uh, you know, trying to do things uh, without here, especially in our dear European Union, where everything requires funding from the, from the EU or the state. So to do something in spite of that is quite an accomplishment. But then again, I think for music it is worthwhile doing. It's understandable because, uh, because music, rock and roll, punk, they've all been largely anti-establishment. Uh, and so uh, 
you know, there's always this kind of strange quasi, I uh, sort of have this queasy feeling when I see officially promoted rock and roll, because uh, it doesn't seem like it's quite the right thing. Um, I mean, there are, I mean, if you think about the history again, you know, even with Elvis pumping his thighs in 1953, 54, and that was all anti-establishment and everything since then has at least, uh, if not been really anti-establishment, at least it's had that tinge to it. I mean, it was already in the 70s that Malcolm McLaren figured out that if you really want to make money, you're going to create a neo-Marxist revolutionary band, which he did, and it's called The Clash. Uh, I mean, it's pretty funny to think about a Marxist punk band being created by a capitalist because you can make more money by being revolutionary and anti-establishment. So that was learned already 35 years ago. But on the other hand, what is really good, and here comes the political moment of my speech, <laughs> that, that uh, I like it that way. Uh, when uh, you know, rock and roll has to do it, it's on its own because uh, when it goes the other way, it can do nasty things. I would recommend everyone here, and you can write it down, uh, to go to, you, uh, go to YouTube and type in Biker Show, or Bike Show, Sevastopol 2014. And you'll find an hour-long link there. And then you'll see what happens when rock and roll and hip-hop and everything else is in the service of the state. Um, it is a genuine Gesamtkunstwerk, if that means anything to anyone, but that was uh, Richard Wagner's idea of, of the total piece of art, including everything. And this is a synthesis of all forms of art, in this case rock and roll, hip-hop, light shows, ballet dancers in the shape of swastikas, fireworks, real fire, a huge motorcycle gang on Harleys with flags, genuine spectacle with tanks on stage, and full of war and hate. It makes Lenny Riefenstahl's propaganda masterpiece, Triumph of the Will, or Triomphe des Villes, really pale in comparison. Um, and so, the Gesamtwerk today is even more Gesamt than uh, anything Richard Wagner could conceive of because we have all these new media and for some reason Gesamtwerk tend to support totalitarian ends. They did in the case of Lenny Riefenstahl, and in the case actually of Bayreuth as well, but in uh, but today we see it being in, used in the service of the state in ways that I could never have conceived of in the past. So if we think that um, rock and roll is just fun and anti-establishment, we have to realize that rock and roll can be used uh, to also very nasty authoritarian ends, when it, especially when it is fueled by oil and other things. So. Um, keep in 